starting with you, perhaps, Professor Singh, uh, as an expert on the Punjabi agricultural system, would you be able to give us a quick overview of the nature of the industry, the size, players, relationships and output, please, uh, in particular, focusing on areas that the current legislation is going to impact? Agriculture Produce Market Committee, as the name suggests, is a multi-stakeholder body of elected representatives of different stakeholders. As representatives, as members of the committee who are farmer representatives, trader representatives, commission agent representatives, government representatives, and even cooperative representatives. So each market is managed by a committee as per the rules of the APMC Act. Basically, purpose was to protect the farmer interest so or farmer price discovery happens in a transparent manner. There's an auction system, which we call Boli. Every lot of farmer produce is put to bidding by the traders. There are two types of people there in the Mandi who are licensed, Kacha Artia and Pakka Artia. Kacha Artia is basically a commission agent who cannot deal with farmer. He can't buy farmer produce. Pakka Arti is a trader. And some people have both these licenses. And there are 30,000 plus such people in these mandis, 150 main markets and sub-markets. And they have been growing over time. Two and a half major crops. I call it two and a half because that's what Punjab is left with. So uh, Punjab basically now grows wheat, paddy and cotton. Yeah, and, and this system of market infrastructure development was also enabled by the fact that government of India, under its uh, public procurement MSP-based system, was buying very large part, and now almost the whole, whole produce is bought by the FCI in wheat and paddy. And even this last season of COVID, 97% of Punjab farmers got MSP. Yeah, okay. even during this difficult time, 97% could sell to FCI at MSP, which is an achievement. Many other state people don't, even 2% farmers don't get MSP or 5% farmers don't get MSP in many states. But FCI doesn't go there. Similarly, in cotton, uh, FCI, uh, CCI, Cotton Corporation of India has been participating in these markets in Punjab in APMC. So over time, what has happened, let me also tell you the other side story, which is also perhaps behind these reforms to some extent. There is this narrative uh, building up in India that farmer is not getting his or her due. That if you see the uh, gap between farmer price and the consumer price, what we call is uh, uh, price spread. That is very high that a lot of intermediaries are uh, eating up the thing. Farmer mm -hmm. doesn't get the uh, remunerated price and consumer ends up paying very high price. And we keep comparing with US and many other countries saying they have only one intermediary or no intermediary. We have five, six, seven or whatever. Because in small, some states of India, not Punjab, there are local intermediaries where farmer doesn't reach the mandi. AP, even if APMC mandi is there, regulated mandi is there, farmer doesn't reach there. It's somebody else who aggregates their produce and sells either on behalf of farmer or buys from farmer and sells himself at MSP and makes the money. Yeah, Because the narrative being built before that one, which, which was also largely true, saying that these APMCs have become monopoly, single buyer basically, that they, they have no other channel for the farmer because the way APMC used to operate was that they would notify an area which would be APMC notified area, that block or that district, entire entire area would be under its jurisdiction, under its regulation, and there will be notified crops. Now Punjab has 108 or 110 notified crops by the Mandi board, which, is, which are monitored by the APMC in terms of handling their transactions. So any first transaction between a farmer seller and a buyer is under the watch of APMC if it is a notified crop in a notified area. The narrative was that earlier nobody could buy from farmers without taking a permission from the APMC committee or Mandi board if he or she was trying to buy outside the Mandi yard. Otherwise, all transactions had to take place under the watch of APMC in the uh, APMC market yard to discover price for the farmer in a fair manner where people could bid on that produce. So in this process, there was this uh, uh, issue of small and marginal farmers and farmers in general not getting adequate credit. So the Artia or the, the commission agent has been also besides facilitating farmer produce selling where farmer doesn't pay any commission, but the Artia has been getting commission earlier to one and a half percent then revised to two percent of the price and then two and a half percent now. They have been lending to farmers. It's called interlocking or interlinking of markets, which I'm sure you appreciate because you're an economist. Mm -hmm. where you, the two markets don't function independently of each other. So what the Artiyas do, you'll be surprised also what, what Punjab is stuck with, uh, mm -hmm. which I have been very vocal about and people don't want to talk about anymore, that the FCI will come and purchase from the farmer. But since farmer has lent, uh, uh, Artiya has lent to the farmer, either in cash or kind, either he has given cash uh, credit or he has given seeds or fertilizer or whatever, from his own shop or from his uncle's shop or nephew's shop or some friend's shop. Mm -hmm. On credit. So the FCI, this is a shock actually for many people when I mention this. It, it, so it happens only in Punjab. Okay. And we have not taken note of it. It is shocking 
It doesn't even happen in Bihar, which we call so-called backward state or whatever, or any other state, that when the FCI pays for the farmer produce, the payment is made to the Artiya in Artiya's name, not to farm. Okay. This has been going on for the last 50, 60 years. It became an issue about 20 years back. Two or three co- state governments have come and gone. Nobody has done anything tangible about it because there is a political economy of agriculture markets there. 2010, the FCA wanted to pay directly to farmers. State government said no. Yeah, unions were fighting this battle saying, why? Why are you linking it up something which is informal money lending, which is informal and illegal? Artia have no license to, do, license to do money lending. They are licensed to do facilitation of trade or if they are Pakka Artia to buy or deal in agriculture produce by buying from farmers and on selling or whatever. In so, Punjab, so- most of the produce is bought by public agencies. So there's no problem price discovery because nobody goes there. MSP, every farmer gets. So sure. it's not a negative sure. thing. Every farmer actually is assured of MSP because FCI buys it, CCI buys it, or sometimes NAFRED buys it. Mm-hmm. So there's no issue. Price discovery is not an issue because everybody is able to sell at MSP and they're happy. That's why they are so upset because they've been issued. See, in India, our problem is not just getting a fair price. Problem is also getting a stable price. Punjab yeah. has been one of the biggest beneficiaries of public procurement at assured price. The, so there's yeah. different mechanisms for the price discovery to occur. And, and part of that is the, the grassroots level at which the money system operates. You mentioned that, you know, that's over hundreds of, of different sub-districts. And the third problem uh, is the emergence of the lending system, the, the provision of credit by the Artias who are unlicensed. And from what I understand, that manifests in very, very high interest rates which are exploitative of the farmers. Is that an accurate summary of the current issues that the, the current yeah, yeah, sure. Very good, very well done, yeah.